since Pennsylvania is a uh, two-party consent state to record, I'm going to ask you, John Mills, if you're uh, if you're okay with us recording this event. That's okay. Good. So we are uh, we're live. We're recording, and uh, we'll count down and uh, start the regular program so they can do their edits in five, four, three. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this King's Report. I'm Frank Scavro. I'll be your tour guide as we manage through the chaos and tumult that's foisted upon us today here in America and across the globe. Uh, it is a truly distinct pleasure, pleasure to have a retired Colonel John Mills with us today. I feel like I know John because I've seen him on uh, the War Room. He's got books that he's written. Uh, he's also with the Center for Security Policy, CSP. Uh, this is a great find and a great time for us at the King's Report to be talking to uh, John Mills today. One of the things I did want to note that in John's, uh, in what he does, he was pretty much compared to uh, Whitaker Chambers, who successfully exposed the communist in the State Department in the late 40s and 50s. So, John, what what better credentials than to say you've been in the mix, you fought in the mix, and you understand where that mix has brought us today, the chaos and tumult. So, uh, John, take it away. Tell us what you know and tell us how we can, we can try to beat the rap and beat the system that's been beating us. Well, thank you, Frank. Well, I mean, just... As far as elections, obviously, we got the election in November 24. Pennsylvania, you're in Scranton, is one of the key states. Uh, Patriots have got to figure out how to overcome in, in uh, uh, Pennsylvania, how to overcome Philadelphia, uh, Buck County, and uh, oh, there's Pittsburgh. one other. What's, what's that? Pittsburgh, Allegheny County. Yeah, yeah, because that's really where... And I think the, uh, I mean, the way Pennsylvania is set up, I mean, you should have majorities in the House and the Senate, but I, I think you had a lot of rhinos who just did not fight and uh, they gave away, gave away the farm figuratively and literally. So the fight is right here in America and Pennsylvanians got to figure out how to reestablish uh uh, constitutional governance. Uh, you gave it away. You got a, uh, a governor who probably shouldn't be in be in office, and uh, and others. But uh, it's because uh, you had uh, the the rhinos had the the house and the senate and gave it away in Pennsylvania. So that's that's a key state now. And at, at Georgia, things seem to be changing a bit. There's some new election laws. The whole Fulton County case is falling apart. Um, Georgians really realize it is all about the fraud in Fulton County in Mar uh, in Arizona. It's Maricopa. But, you know, this now Hobbs is under investigation. Uh, this is important. Uh, this is very important. Um, so, uh, you know, but we just got to Nevada is clearly in play. Wisconsin, uh, Michigan. Uh, we got to figure out how to get back to, uh, you know, sensible governance in uh in Pennsylvania. Now your Senator, I will, you know, John Fetterman has su surprised me, uh, has surprised me continuously one way or another, but you know, his stand, uh, against, uh, you know, for Israel against the Hamas craziness, I think has been quite, uh, he's made the most sense of just about any Senator. In, uh, in, and so I've been very impressed with his, uh, stand and he's, he's been unequivocal on it. I mean, he's just, Hey, they started it. The Israelis are finishing it. It's as simple as that. And John, that's one of the black and white issues that's been age old through millennia, right? It, it, it's the debasement, it's the attacks on, on, on the Jewish and the Israelis. And, uh, you know, for Fetterman, of all people, to stand up and say, this isn't right, I, you know, it gives me hope. I, although a lot of other, other points <laughs> are, are still out there. But yes, you're, you're right in saying that Fetterman is like, look, this is common sense and logic. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, good for him. And we just got to find common ground on topics we agree on. And yeah. I mean, he 
he just, you know, got the hero trophy for this whole uh, episode. Everybody else was just trying to gauge which way the wind is blowing. No, no, no. I mean, this is common sense, right and wrong. And John Fetterman uh, nailed it and it, it did the right thing and is not and and has not given into the bullying. And, uh, you know, we've had several uh, 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 college presidents lose their jobs, uh, uh, fortunately, because they, they just right. couldn't say common sense things. Um, and, and, you know, I'm hoping that there's been a tipping point in this country over this. This is just common sense. You know, when, when you, know, you say tipping point, I will let you know this, that in Scranton at the munitions plant that's making all those 120 mo uh, millimeter mortars for Ukraine, the Palestinian faction has had multiple protest rallies from the sea to from from whatever that chant is, which I forget at the moment. They they are active in Scranton. So if they're active in Scranton, this this is a coordinated effort that goes much more beyond any local whims or or even you or I like this is this is an international worldwide it's a power grab and it, it, like you say it's up to Pennsylvanians and Scrantonians to look up and say look this is not what we're we're not signing up for this we want peace we want you know you're not US superiority I'll say it because look if, if it's not us leading the world the world is in deep trouble so just wanted to let you know that tidbit yeah, yeah, I think you have Letter Kenny up there, right? Is that correct? Or Letter Kenny's at the bottom part of the state. Oh, okay. Uh, What's you? You have you have two two one five five millimeter artillery plants that are like legacy World War Two. It's Scranton and one other. There's two. Um, it's it's close by. Uh, uh, I can't remember what the name. Chamberlain of it is. is the one in Scranton. Oh, oh, say that again. Chamberlain. Okay. Chamberlain is the one in Scranton. It used to be an old rail yard that they converted right in World War II and have been there ever since making these, uh, I guess they were howitzer shells. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the key. I mean, they, we've added capabilities in Ohio, Texas, and the final, what happens is those 155 rounds go to Iowa and uh, that's where they're packed with explosive mm -hmm. and uh, finalized. Uh, but uh, but yeah yeah and and so they they're targeting these the Scranton plant, uh, you know that's intentional. But these 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 are professional protesters. Yesterday they were squatters. The day before they were they were violent transgenders. The day before they were uh, antifers. The day before they were uh, Black Lives Matter. They get two hundred and fifty dollars a day to protest. Uh, this is absolutely coordinated. You know, but you, a lot of this is your Chinese special operators have come across the border. What isn't it curious? There's a number of cases they have moved in and taken over uh, legal cannabis. I don't know what the what the laws are in uh, um, Pennsylvania, but this legal cannabis is a scourge, and it, and it's uh, you know orthogonal to federal law. You can't bank the cash. Right. It's a huge opportunity for skimming and doing what? Uh, deploying that that skimmed cash out to the protesters. That's what's going on. That's what's yep. going on. Dark money, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, yeah, those those protesters uh, at the Scranton plant. Uh, I assure you, most <laughs> of them are getting paid, and if they're not getting paid, they're stupid uh, because the the money is out there for them. Um, so, uh, it's, it's a professional, it's a professional gig. Uh, uh, I'm sure they're paying taxes on it. Um, yeah, right. but, but, uh, yeah, that's so, and that's really part of the, the worldwide campaign to destabilize America is, uh, is really, that's the, the Chinese special operators of now are now in place for direct fomenting of uh, civil unrest. And that, that's what they're doing. Uh, China continues to build capabilities to invade Taiwan, but it's really they're emphasizing the unrestricted warfare, which Chinese illegals across the border is absolutely part of that. And uh, so that's a key, key part of that. But they're doing that uh, uh, really uh, challenging Filipino uh, uh, integrity and, and sovereignty. Uh, they're, they're, they are meddling in three key islands, Palau, uh, the Solomon Islands and now French New Caledonia. Um, and 
they've already essentially taken over the Solomon Islands and, 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 you know, a number of us might have uh, grandparents uh, or great, great uncles and aunts. I do uh, who uh, fought on the fought on Guadalcanal. My, my grand, grandfather fought on Guadalcanal in world war two. So uh, they've essentially taken over Guadalcanal, but if they're able to throw the ele- upcoming election in Palau, uh, and then also topple in French New Caledonia. They've cr- essentially created a barrier that that sweeps around the left flank of the second island chain and cuts off Australia. And and again, ma- many Americans got to get their heads wrapped around this. They say, well, I don't see bombs and missiles falling on American territory, so I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, there is a war in progress. We are in World right. War III. World War III. Uh, it's, it's unrestricted warfare. Warfare has many forms. Uh, most Americans are conditioned to only acknowledge or understand uh, uh, bombs and missiles. Well, we, we do have bombs and missiles on landing on U.S. territory. It's called fentanyl. And, uh, you know, I know, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in many places uh, in Pennsylvania, that is every, everybody knows somebody who's been uh, killed by uh, fentanyl. Everybody knows somebody who's been killed by fentanyl. In our sister county, Luzerne County, there are hundreds of deaths from overdoses. In fact, uh, they are, you know, they're now distributing Narcan, number one, free of charge, and number two, with no registration. We're just giving out Narcan because that's how prevalent it is. So you could be a drug user, lock up and say, give me the Narcan in case my buddy overdoses, and you get it, John. So this, this is a crisis. You're right. This is, this is, and it's by design, and we, under the Biden administration, are what complicit complacent like and and to your point that it's a it's a global effort they're racketeering and it's a conspiracy of of everyone to allow this to occur am i right oh yeah yeah i mean this this uh the biden team is enabling it by an open border uh, Chinese operatives, uh, really essentially the cartels are now working for China. A lot of people don't understand this pivot here, but when Chinese operators can walk around in between cartel territory in Mexico and not be harmed or murdered like many others, uh, that's an indicator. They are now, uh, essentially overseers of what's going on. They have essentially been they are they are they are safe to to walk around uh, northern Mexico in between cartel areas. They're, that only means one thing: they they have a special status now. Right. Okay. Yes. So that, if you were to go down there, you or I, or try to interdict some of that, we would be, you know, mercifully, we'd be shot on sight. Now, who knows what else they might do? But the point you make and I make is: look, these guys walk around with impunity because they're part of the effort to overthrow the government of the United States and to vanquish the American citizen who who will and who at some point has to stand up and push back. So I'm hoping it's with this election. I've I've hoped it's with every election. But I mean, the point you're making, it's just it's out of control. Yeah, yeah, it is. uh, That's exactly what's going on. So uh, uh, and, you know, with with um, November coming, I mean, the blue team is freaking out on several fronts. You know, they're going, you know, Trump is going to authorize, you know, the use of military force in Mexico. Well, it's it's become an an absolutely ungoverned space. Uh, this is it's right on our border. We've ignored Mexico for many years. And, uh, you know, uh, it is a Disneyland for foreign operatives. Absolutely. And so, you know, we got to put our foot down and start reintroducing the uh, Monroe Doctrine. Or even the United States Constitution provide for a common defense. At that southern border, I, whether it's human trafficking, smuggling, whether it's drugs, whatever it is, whether it's terrorists and actors, like if we don't have a common defense, which we don't down there, then what's the point of paying all these taxes, John? Uh, or having the United States military, like we're just co-opted to the point of, of near no return. Yeah, yeah, ab- absolutely. And I was I was looking up. It's Wilts Bar is where you have a sister ammunition plant uh, in uh, uh, Pennsylvania. So that's in addition to Scranton. Um, and yeah, a new new plant has been opened in Mesquite, Texas. Actually, opened on the 29th. 
Um, but um, yeah, so that's that's what's going on. We get we, big concern uh, uh, with Biden, you know, uh, approving. <sighs> This is the problem. You have to be clear at all times with foreign policy statements, but the 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 approval, but with a lot of caveats uh, on use of uh, U.S. weapons to strike uh, from Ukraine into Russia is. Uh, and I've always been agnostic uh, and nonpartisan on on uh, the the Russia Ukraine situation. I'm not a Russia fan. I'm not a Russia hater. Uh, and, uh, uh, what, but what we have now is just an absolutely dangerous escalation, uh, with the Biden team, uh, again, with a number of caveats, but all these caveats cause confusion and, uh, but, oh yeah, you can, you can, Ukraine, you can use us weapons to strike into Russia. You know, this is a very dangerous provocation and Russia is operating as a, as an ally, a junior partner to China in the worldwide campaign to take down America. That's what the Ukraine war is all about. Everybody gets caught up on, Hey, Ukraine's corrupt. Zelensky's a WEF -er, blah, blah, blah. All those things may have some truth to them, but you got to look at it. Uh, this was Russia's part of the deal to topple America was to take out Ukraine uh, so the the uh, allowance of U.S. weapons to go cross border into Russia uh, and, and other countries are allowing this. This is a very dangerous because two can play this game. What are they going to do when, uh, you know, uh, Russia strikes back into a NATO, NATO country mm, right. uh, that is that is allowing and enabling and facilitating, maybe even launching some of these weapons? So, uh, you know, I, I think this is uh, I don't. You know, uh, Jake Sullivan is absolutely unqualified to be the oh. national security advisor. His only experience is trying to throw elections. And now here he is the key uh, decision maker on national security matters with zero experience other than uh, election uh, collusion. So very dangerous. Situation. Yeah, when I watch these guys, it's, I, I, the Biden administration, especially the State Department, it's like, and I don't like Saturday Night Live, but it's like a bad Saturday Night Live skit with Blinken playing a guitar over there with Jake Sullivan with with NATO, like you said. Now they're going to allow uh, F-16s and and other other apparatus. You know they're striking into the heart of Russia. And I'm a student, graduated in 1980, could never figure out why the the, the West Germans didn't want the Pershing twos in their land to defend them against Russia. Having said that, we vanquished Russia, perestroika, glasnost, uh, you know, and we squandered that because at one point Russia could have been somewhat like a sister to the United States. And when Biden came in, that just blew up everything and has brought us to the brink of World War III hot firing. You know, we're in World War III, as you say, but I mean a really hot hot war so you know where do we go from here john well yeah it goes back even further than that it was really madeline albright during the clinton madeline years albright. that that chose to make russia the enemy so that and at that time russia was absolutely broke derelict on its yeah. knees uh we could have easily created a new era in international relations by by simply reaching out and helping russia uh, instead Clinton was distracted by domestic uh, uh, crises of his own making, uh, you know, was the, the the allure of international peacemaking, peacekeeping was, uh, you know, Madeleine Albright, you have this wonderful military, use it for that. But she hated the Russians. And uh, Madeleine Albright was, you know, the singular person that really chose to make uh, Russia evil in the enemy. And it, it's funny because I... Uh, you know, when during the Obama years, when uh, it was th this visceral hatred of Russia uh, and it was like, I go, well, where were you guys? And I said this to a number of Obama appointees. Where were you guys during the Cold War? Because my memory of the Cold War was uh, and I actually having lived a, 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 an amount of it, uh, the uh, they were the ones always saying Russia's not bad. You know, the Soviets aren't bad. We're overreacting. Reagan's going to cause war. Those Pershings are going to cause conflict. You know, they were constantly, you know, Ted Kennedy actively colluded with the, the green movement yes. and, and the freeze movement. 
which has been shown. It was no question about it. Was absolutely doc- documented and factually a KGB front operation. They uh, they were always saying, "Oh, the Soviets are bad," but then all of a sudden in the nineties, Russians are evil. I I don't get it. I can't keep up with this this change of logic with no no uh, no basis. And it's not simply that they're contrarians. They're you know the end game is to vanquish the United States. It's, it's been proven now. Like the end game is like to drain all of our wealth and have us be some type of subservient. I remember in the eighties. Strobe Talbot, he was the UN uh, ambassador. He said, in the end, we will all live in a 10 by 10 room with no possessions, and that's going to be your life on this planet. So there are some bad long range plans here that, you know, they're finally be coming to fruition because you, how, how, could, how could we be in the position we're in where China? China could, in 1988, China couldn't launch a missile until they got the the uh, Laurel and Doral technology from Al Gore and and Buddy Bill Clinton. So we this is it's a long road, John. But here we are. What do we do? Yeah, well, it's all about winning in uh, 2024 and uh, putting in the right right uh, uh, the, getting the right policies in in, in 2024, and that's that's where. Uh, uh, Pennsylvanians, Keystoners got to figure out how to bring back. And I, I, you know, just, I don't have the map memorized, but I was, I pulled up a map here of the counties and, uh, you know, it's really, 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 uh, Montgomery bucks, Philadelphia. And, uh, like you said, uh, Allegheny County, you know, everybody can outvote them. This is, yes. the, this is what they need to do. They try to do this in M- Missouri with, by taking over St. Louis, and for a while there, St. Louis was outvoting the, uh, you know, through fraud, was outvoting the rest of the, the state of Missouri. That's what they're doing in, uh, in uh, um, Pennsylvania. I'm, and Pennsylvania is unfortunately losing population. Why are they losing population? You know, it's, uh, it's uh, well, it's uh, policies. Oppressive. Yeah, it's oppressive blue policies that just make it a high cost. Uh, it's unfortunate. This the Keystoneers, you're, you know, you're one of the foundations of the American economy, but now you're losing population. So, uh, got to figure something out. Beautiful state. I love the state. Yes, beautiful. John, I'll give you some hope in, in this respect. Uh, Luzerne County, who actually in the 2016 election is one of the counties that elected Trump. Big time. They were in Obama County, and their swing was like a plus 16 from Obama. So what we've done there in the last 100 days is, in fact, the two rhino, the chairman of the Republican Party of Luzerne County and the vice president, resigned because we went in and did an insurgency and got people at the ground level, which they want to get involved for Trump. This is a good... Everyone listening, ask people to help and volunteer because they will. This is golden for Trump. In a normal election, there are 63 or 64 people running for the Republican committee seats. This time, there was over 239 on the ballot plus write-ins. So we have just effectively taken back the Luzerne County GOP from the rhinos. And now what we're doing is having... Monday meetings, every Monday, just had one last night, and we're going, like the Trump 47 uh, plan, everyone's going out to 10 homes in their immediate backyard, and we're putting out the the mail-in ballot applications, commitments to vote, like, that's what it takes. Talk to your neighbor and say, look, let's get this done, because if there's one thing everybody knows, they're paying more. Whether they're Republican, Democrat, Independent, Green, the point is, we can't afford this, and it's getting worse. So if that's not enough impetus to make Pennsylvania and America swing the other way, I don't know what is, but that's some good news. So you know that something's actually happening. And to go from like 63 Republican committee people to 239 plus, that this is the time to strike, John. This is the time to strike. So that's our update from Northeast Pennsylvania. We're working it. We did it in 2016. We're going to do it again in 2024. Uh, well, a- amen, uh, uh, Frank. That that's great news. And uh, 
Um, yeah, we're, we're counting on you. We're counting on you. That's, that, that's, <laughs> re- that's really, uh, what we need to do is see, uh, we make it, uh, need to make the election too big to steal and, uh, put in the, put in the right person because, uh, Everything the Biden team is touching is turning to me- turning to uh, a mess, and it's just they they're, they're, they they don't have any like Jake Sullivan, no experience running anything except his mouth, you know. So you have a bunch of policy types. Hey, I spent a lot of years in Office Secretary of Defense doing policy, um, uh, but there's a lot of difference between policy and running things. And uh, absolutely, and I mean, we need we need, always need good policy. But you also need to know how to implement, and you need to uh, when you when your policy is not working, you need to adjust, and that's the problem. They they create this utopian view of the future, and then they give out awards for intent. That's why Obama, thirty seconds after being uh, inaugurated, uh, first term, he receives the Nobel Prize. Oh, oh, right you know? and it's like the Nobel Prize Committee is asked, "Well, why did you give give him?" Well, it's because of what he intends to do. So you know, this is the. This is this is the challenge of the blue team. It's all about intent, not actual results and deliveries. You know, to that point, right? They're guilty of racketeering and conspiring because that national media, they'll take the worst disastrous truth that that the Biden administration is failing. And all of a sudden it's like, well, look what these guys, they've they've done a turnaround or or they've never been failing. Uh it it's it's just pathetic. But I, I, I did want to see, uh, you wanted to touch on the Russian naval forces visiting Cuba. I, I've seen that, this big exercise that's going to happen. Tell us a little bit about that and what your thoughts are on back in the backyard this is, here, Russia and Cuba. This is, this is uh, uh, as part of uh, the worldwide campaign and influence, they see weakness in America and they feel that we're dabbling in their territory, which, uh, yeah, we have a worldwide presence. Uh, so they say, OK, we're going to play that game in your neighborhood. But the concern is, you know, we really Southern Command really doesn't have a whole lot of resources um, and even a small Russian flotilla. Now, I would suggest we also. It was announced in 2023 by the Chinese that they're not only part of the reopened Lourdes intelligence base. 90 miles south of Key West, uh, when and Key West has been uh, uh, a Chinese nationals have attempted entry there multiple times, uh, also at Kennedy Space Center uh, and uh, things like that. But this is pushback right in our our own front yard, and this is the failure to enforce the Monroe Doctrine. And uh, so that and it's I think they're also creating an opportunity for Venezuela to invade, uh, seize the. Uh, uh, next door Guiana, but it's really all about the uh, the maritime areas above Guiana because that's where a lot of the gas and oil resources are offshore. So um, even with a small naval force and the Chinese having both intel and military in Cuba, uh, I think there's essentially an ongoing uh, you know second Ru- uh, Cuban missile crisis. So I, I think wherever the Chinese go and have a base, they put in air defense missiles. The problem with these air defense missiles, the S-300 and S-400 is they're very long range. And they also, well, uh, the S-400 is, is nuclear capable. I'm not saying there are nukes in, uh, in, Flo- in uh, Cuba yet, but you have a launch capability. And also those missiles can be used not only surface to air to shoot down aircraft, they can be used surface to surface. So we essentially, uh, and is it just the is our is our intelligence community corrupt? Are they are they just is this below what's called the cut line? And they're not. We might be collecting, but we're not actually analyzing or actioning it. Uh, uh, and I and I'm concerned this may be simply below the cut line, and we're not paying attention. And you know, the, no matter what the question is, the, the Averill, uh, 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 what, what's her name, the D- director of national intelligence, but any of the the, uh, the IC folks, right. Averill Averill Haynes, uh, oh, but. God. They always say, no matter what, oh, yeah, we're covering that. Oh, yeah, we got that covered. Oh, yeah, you just, you're not right on to this pro. Oh, yeah, we got this covered. Anytime somebody from the IC says we got it covered, uh, don't trust them. So, uh, you know, is, is I, I assert we probably have a second Cuban missile crisis that's been ongoing for the tenure of the Biden team. And uh, we're either unaware of it or aware of it and just cho- choosing to ignore it. 
they're providing for a common defense. They, uh, these are all like the ABCs. It's elementary. And it goes to show you the fact that w the United States military is, is no longer focused on protecting the homeland. We got out of that business. I don't know if we're in world relief. I don't know what what function they're providing now. And I'm, I'm sure that, that the people inside of it are not happy, but you know, and I'm in the cheap seats, John. I, you know, I'm just, like I said, a student of the Cold War, 1960, 70, 80. I saw what works. I, I saw the Berlin Wall fall. The most stunning thing I've ever seen is back in 57 when they were building the the East German Wall. And as they, they built the bricks and the barbed wire, the people were just sitting on their porches watch the, watching themselves be, be walled in. So, you know, so much for human nature. And that's where Americans are special. We're not supposed to take this. We're supposed to say, no, we're, we're, we're our own sovereigns and, and we're not going to allow this to go on. So like you say, hopefully the 2024 election, we reassert ourselves because, you know, if we don't, who will? Don't wait for the Italians. Maybe the Poles. The Poles were pretty good. Uh, but, yeah, this is not, uh, you know, the Australians, they had a pretty tough lockdown during COVID. So I just see all these examples. Examples, and if you, the United States is fading, <laughs> like I said, Canada is not coming to our rescue. Nobody is, John. So you know, as, as we as we approach the end of, of of our chat, just a couple ideas on on where we're at, what we have to do, and and your your short term or long term outlook. Well, it's it's really about the 24 election. And that's where uh, that's really where, uh, uh, you know, everybody, the citizens have to get involved. You know, we have no excuses if if people are sitting at home bellowing on social media. Right, right. You know, you got to get out there. You mentioned what's going on uh, in Luzerne and taking over the county GOP. You got to get involved. Hold your county officials responsible. Your seven key centers of gravity in your county are always your election registrar, uh, your county council, your school board, um, and uh, uh, judges, sheriffs, and prosecutors. So county council, school board, uh, regist at registrar, election board was the one I was missing there. Election yeah, board. election board. So, uh, so those are your seven and, and hold them accountable. So the party is one thing in officials in those seven other spots is the other thing. And that's for citizens have to show up at these meetings, get involved, ask reason questions at, at open mic time and keep on probing and asking questions and probe and ask questions and bring up things um, because, uh, yeah, you just, even if they're clear, your county officials are clean, they're going to be a lot cleaner when they, when they realize you have informed citizens asking questions. Um, and, uh, so that's, that's, that's really for most Americans, that's the battle. That's right where it needs to happen at. And that's a great point, John, because I served 13 years on the, on the old Ford school board. And, you know, there's a lot of, put it this way administration usually comes down with their wish list. Most of the people on there don't do investigation or critical thinking. So they just go along with whatever administration says. But when someone from the public, a parent, a grandparent comes in and says, you know, if you do that policy, you're going to have kids dressing up as furry animals and, and litter boxes in your, in your classroom. You know, if we don't go in, like you said, and say, wait a minute, what the heck are you doing? then good people will institute bad policy. So your point is well taken. And as a resource, anyone watching this, if you want to run for public office or, or need any help, I'm always available. You can, you can contact me and I will tell you how to do it, when to do it, what the ins and outs are, because uh, I've, although I'm not enlisted, I'm not part of the U.S. military, I wish I was. Uh, thank you for your service, John, absolutely. Uh, I'm here to fight in in the trenches, in the political within the political system. So I think your point is well taken. We need more people standing up, and it's easy to do once you do it. 
it's like habitual. Once you start speaking at meetings, you'll rather enjoy it because you're going to bring a perspective that most other people don't bring. So, yeah, absolutely, Frank. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good. All right. Well, you know, John Mills does have two books I want to mention. I've seen them. The Nation Will Follow and also War Against the Deep State. So John knows. He's he's been there. And, and I, I thank John for spending the time with us today. But to go more in depth and to find out what John has seen, what John thinks, and, and how we can change some of the, the current outcomes that the United States currently is, is wrestling with. Because I, I don't like the track we're on. And I don't like where we're at. I, I would like a, a better.